Good night, Ben. Good night, Amos. Whenever Ben appeared in public, he uh, kept me under his hat. There was a small door in the front so I could step out on the brim. Thus, I was able to observe and offer advice without being seen by others. I say, isn't that young Franklin? Why, yes. <laughs> Good day, Ben. Good day, uh, Mr. Uh, uh... Governor Keith and Dr. Palmer. Governor Keith, Dr. Palmer? I read your new paper, my boy. <laughs> Congratulations. First rate. Keep up the good work, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Bright young chap. Yes, indeed. Uh, very alert. Seems to know what's going on. Just think. The governor spoke to you. You see, Ben, people are beginning to sit up and take notice. Yes. Oh, we are really getting someplace. Nothing can stop us now. Uh-oh. Post, Ben. Post. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Post? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What have I done? Amos? Amos? <clears throat> Amos. As the years passed, Ben's reputation grew. Letters poured in from all over the colonies. Requests for money, for information on inventions, advice in business, and even for advice to the lovelorn. I spent all my spare time answering them. And meanwhile, Ben puttered around with his experiments. <laughs> oh, Amos, you should have seen yourself. <laughs> that was the funny... <laughs> Amos, where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? Oh, Amos, now can't you take a little joke? Joke? You call this a joke? Oh, but Amos, I didn't mean it. Now, please don't go. I'll never do it again. Well, no more tricks now. Promise? Yeah, I promise. It was shortly thereafter that Ben took up kite flying. To the framework of his largest kite, he fastened a small box, for it was his idea that I become the world's first flying reporter. I was so enthralled with the spectacle spread out below that I failed to notice a sharp pointed wire fixed to the kite just above my head. I was the victim of a plot. Amos, speak to me. Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Goodbye. Goodbye and forever. Please, Amos, wait. Amos, Amos. And so I left Ben and returned to my family in the old church, in the vestry, behind the paneling. The years that followed were troubled ones. There were rumors of violence and rebellion, loud talk against the stamp tax and other outrages. How about it, Ben? Are we going to stand for this? No! No taxation without representation!
It was during this crisis that Ben was chosen to go to England to lay our case before the king. And now all the colonies anxiously awaited his return. What happened, what Ben? What did he say? What about the taxes? Will he lift them? Tell him, Ben. What did the king say? What did he say? Gentlemen, I'm afraid the mission was a failure. The king was unreasonable. He wouldn't listen. All right, then. We'll fight for our independence. There has to be war. Oh, he's right. He should war. Be. But, gentlemen, there must be some other way. Some other way? What way? No, no, no we've no, got no, to no, fight. No, what if we lose? I will hang for treason. What'll we do, Ben? Yes, what'll we do? What'll we do? If I only knew. If I only knew. Poor Ben. I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. It was a heavy responsibility. I could help him. I knew I could. But no. I couldn't go back. After all, a mouse has a little pride. It was a night in the summer of 1776 that I was awakened by a voice calling my name. Amos! Amos! <laughs> Could it be at this hour? Amos! All right, all right. Ben! Amos! Well, what do you want? Well, I... That is... I've come to ask if... Oh, Amos, come back to me. Would you, please? Out of the question. Oh, please, Amos. Consider your country. My country? Yes, Amos. There are big decisions to be made. I know, Ben. I know all about... I need you, Amos. You've just got to come back. On my own terms? Yes, Amos, yes. If I draw up an agreement, will you sign it? I'll sign it, Amos. I'll sign anything. Very well. You shall have the agreement first thing in the morning. And wherefore? And where to? <laughs> so many twos in it. Will not tolerate. <laughs> Will not tolerate. Yes, whereas under the conditions is a binding, absolutely binding. B I N D I N G. Good day, Ben. Come in, Amos. Come in. Here, let me take your hat and coat. Nice weather we're having. Now, could I pour you some tea and we'll get on to my problems? If you don't mind, Ben, will you sign this first? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, um, <clears throat> mind if I read it? If you wish. Ben! Ben, are you there? It's Tom Jefferson. Ben! Come in, Red. Come in. Ben, you've got to help me. Of course, Red, but... I've been racking my brains, working day and night, but it's no use. I'm stuck. But, Red, I thought it was finished. It is. It is, Ben. But I don't like the beginning. It just doesn't sound right. Uh, listen to this. Uh, the time has come... When we, the people of these colonies... Yes, yes. No, no, not big enough. How about this? Now is the time when we, the people... Well, uh, No, uh, no, not strong enough. Uh, the time is at hand when we, the people, must... Oh, you see what I mean, Ben? If I could only find the words. Psst, ben, how about our contract? No, Amos, not now. Yes, now, or I'm leaving. All right, Amos, all right. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary... Ben! That's it! That's it! When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political band which have connected them with another, and to assume, among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature are of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives our fortunes 
and our sacred honor. On July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted by Congress. I was very proud to have had a small part in the creation of this great document. And so, we are gathered here today to pay our respects to Benjamin Franklin, for he was truly one of the greatest figures in American history.